So the new season of Korra premiered last Friday, and it's come to my attention that a lot of the fans really disliked season one of Legend of Korra. I see, I, I don't get this. Season one was awesome. I remember watching it like every Saturday and just being enthralled. They did a great job going in a new direction with the, the setting and ditching the master, the four elements journey. Cause I mean, we'd already seen that in the last airbender. We didn't need to see somebody go on a big quest to learn how to control all the elements. The only thing Korra had to learn was airbending, which you know, we hadn't seen in the last series. So it made sense to sort of address this. And it all fit to characterize Korra, too. And the setting was really cool. I mean, I, I like steampunk, so I was really into it, you know? And it just looks really impressive. I mean, The Last Airbender looked really impressive, too, but they, they bumped it up a little bit. But I really liked the characters, like, a lot. Tenzin and Bolin, um, Asami. I think Asami is a good female character, actually. I, I really like her. She's got a sort of independence to her. I, I, I don't know. She's, she's interesting. And I thought that her relationship with her father in season one was like really good. That was pretty cutting edge for a Nickelodeon show. The only downside to Asami's character is her ties to Mako. And that kind of sucks. But anyway, whatever. I mean, hopefully season two could do something better with her now that that's in the past. And Lynn, dude, dude, Lynn is an awesome character. She's so like sassy. And I like her tough, feisty, older woman thing. And Toph was my favorite character in The Last Airbender. So I think Lynn lives up to that legacy. And Korra, uh, Korra has her faults, but I, I don't know. I feel like they make it work for the story and it all kind of rounds out her character. I like that they made her a tough girl. I, I like that because it's a good contrast to Aang's peaceful, zen, childlike monk thing. Again, though, it it's a shame that Korra's motivation, a lot of the time, sort of boils down to Mako. And yeah, okay, Mako's not very interesting. He's just kind of the generic, cool, broody, sexy guy and like the stand-in for Zuko. Except Zuko was a much better character. Like, I actually might have to take what I said about Toph being my favorite character in The Last Airbender now that I think about it. Because Zuko... I don't know, why can't I just have both Toph and Zuko? But the point is, Mako does not live up to Zuko's legacy. Iroh does, the character that Dante Bosco now voices. Iroh is pretty cool, but he only had like 15 minutes of screen time in the last episode, so I guess he doesn't really count. So Mako's pretty lame, but whatever, because I mean, oh man, the, the villains. Amon was really interesting and scary. He was unique, and, and I really liked it. And Tarlock was cool too, because he was very behind-the-scenes, manipulate chess master type of dude. I liked him, he was pretty sinister. But then the other good points, uh, <laughs> pro-bending was really cool. I enjoyed all of the pro-bending scenes. And the whole conflict with uh, benders versus non-benders, because it was essentially like bigotry and discrimination, and they were handling that on Nickelodeon. And Avatar's always tried to strive to not just be a kid's show, but I think that Korra actually kind of steps it up a little bit from The Last Airbender. Definitely, they, they really increase the darkness of the series, but they still hold the humor, and I like that. They, they got the humor down, even though they did make it a little bit darker. I, I feel like the biggest mistake that they made really was the ending. And not the big ending, I mean like the last minute. It feels like really cheap to just sort of resolve it that quickly. Like Korra loses her bending and then all of a sudden Aang just magics it back. I don't know, it feels like they just wasted a really good opportunity to do something big in season two. Like, I know I just said that I didn't want to see a journey to master the four elements, but doing something where Korra has to learn to cope with losing this great power that she's had since she was a child, and maybe down the line, you know, learning to get it back and stuff, that had a lot of potential. They could have done something with that, because that's like exploring loss, and not just normal loss, but like the loss of yourself. Essentially, it's like being crippled. I don't know, they could have done something really, really out there. And again, I know, a kids show and whatever, but it, this is Avatar we're talking about. It's, it's not your typical kids show. That is that is my only complaint, really. My only big complaint is that they didn't do anything with what they could have had at the end. But other than that, like, those little faults are aren't a big deal. I remember people really, really, really liking the show. See, now, I have a theory, though, that the real reason that people are now dissatisfied with the series is 
because the novelty of it being this mature kid show has kind of worn off. The Last Airbender tackled these really interesting and complex issues and told a story that we weren't used to in children's television. And it had this really great balance of humor and lightheartedness and then like serious stuff. And I feel like maybe that that rarity isn't so appreciated anymore. Like now we're asking for more from Korra. There's just some kind of disparity between our expectations and reality maybe? Because I mean, to me personally, a lot of the complaints seem kind of like nitpicks. That's just my opinion and I, I haven't gone back and rewatched the show. I've only seen season one as it was airing. So maybe I'm wrong. Maybe if I go back and watch it, maybe I'll be like, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. But as of right now, I'm still like, why are people disliking this? It was really good. And you can't tell me that you weren't impressed by the finale of that season. I have my problems with the very ending, but the conclusion of the conflict with Amon was fantastic. That was so unexpected, especially for a children's show again. I remember actually going to Anime Expo, I think it was like two weeks after the finale aired, and seeing a bunch of cosplayers and like running up to them and being like, yeah, great cosplay. How about that ending of the show? And they were like, yeah, it was amazing. I don't know. So uh, where did this hate come from? Maybe somebody in the comments will know. I don't know if you can help me to wrap my head around this. I want to know your thoughts. I, I want to get why you don't like the show now. But for now, I'm just going to keep on watching season two and enjoy it.